In this lecture, we're going to look at the following example that deals with static equilibrium. So let's begin and look at the following system. So our system consists of a lamp that has a mass of 250 kilograms that is hung by rope number three. Now rope number three is itself attached to two more ropes, rope number one and rope number two, which are both attached to the walls of a ceiling. Now the angle that rope number one makes with our horizontal, with our x-axis, is 60 degrees. So this angle right here is 60 degrees. Now let's suppose that this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. And anything pointing up is positive, anything pointing to the right is positive. Anything pointing to the left is negative, anything pointing down is also negative. We want to find or calculate the tensions in ropes 1 and in ropes 2. So let's begin by first assuming that our object, our system, is in fact in static equilibrium. And that simply means that our object is stationary. It's not moving, it's not rotating. Its velocity in every direction, both translational as well as rotational, are zero. And the net force is acting on our object in every direction, in this case along the x direction and along the y direction, are zero. So that means we can write the following two formulas. The sum of all the forces along the x direction acting on this object is zero. Likewise, the sum of all the forces acting on our object, the lamp, along the y direction is also zero. <coughs> So, let's begin by looking at all the forces along the x-axis, along our horizontal. So, what are all the forces? Well, one force, if we look at this point, points this way. And this force is the force due to rope 2. And let's call this force subscript 2, or tension in the rope 2. Likewise, we also have a, a, a force going in the other way because this net force going up, net force 1, creates a vertical and a horizontal component. So this is our horizontal component and our vertical component. Now right now at this point, we're only interested in finding our x component. Our x component is simply using our trig functions, is the magnitude of this multiplied by cosine of this angle. In other words, uh, <clears throat> the sum of all my forces along the x direction is simply this force which is positive because initially we said our x direction going this way is positive so <coughs> so this force is positive and this force is negative so let's sum up all the forces so our sum of all the forces along the x direction is equal to f subscript to the tension in our rope number two minus the tension in rope number one going in this direction. So magnitude of force number one multiplied by cosine of the angle which we said was 60. And this equals zero because our object is stationary, it's not accelerating, it has no velocity. So this equals zero. Likewise, let's follow the same exact steps and find the net forces acting along the y direction. So along the y direction, we have a negative force going down, and that negative force is due to gravity. It's mass times uh, our gravitational constant g. Likewise, we have a force going upward, and this force is positive because initially we said anything going along the y direction up is positive. And this force is our uh, sine of this angle multiplied by the magnitude of force number one, the tension in rope one. So we take this guy and we subtract our force going down. And we get the following. The force in rope one, <coughs> or the tension in rope one times sine of the angle. Why? Well, because using the trick function, we know that opposite over hypotenuse gives us this magnitude. So, force in rope 1, or tension in rope 1 times sine 60, minus force going down, which is simply m times g is equal to. Now we, uh, now we replace this force with m times g, and we get this equation. And this equation also equals 0 from the fact above. And we get this fact, by the way, from the law of motion. 
So this equals zero. And now we have two equations and two unknowns. So we don't know what force two is and we don't know what force one is. In fact, that's exactly what we want to find. We want to find our tensions in rope one and rope two. So since we have two equations and two unknowns, we can manipulate our equations in a way to solve for both. So let's begin by first finding what f of 1 is in terms of these guys. So, notice that f of 1 times sine 60 minus mg equals 0. So let's bring the mg to this side by adding mg to both sides. And let's then divide by sine 60. And we will get f of 1, the force in our uh, rope number 1, or tension in rope 1 is equal to <coughs> mass of the lamp times g divided by sine 60. And now we can take this guy knowing what the m is, knowing what the g is, and knowing what this guy is, and we can take this and plug it into our force number 2. So, once again, we take this and we replace this with this. So we get f of 2 minus, not f of 1, but m times g divided by sine 60 multiplied by cosine 60. So, once again, we take this and we make it look like this. So we bring this guy to this side by adding this component to both sides and then we replace this F1 with this F1. And we get F of subscript 2 is equal to M times G which we get from here times cosine 60 divided by sine 60. And now we simply plug our values in <coughs> and we find our force or tension in rope number 1 is 1,416 newtons. Likewise, we were asked to find the force in our force number two. So this is what we want to find. And that means we can simply take our f of two and divide it by cosine 60. So according to this formula, f of one is simply uh, f of 2 divided by cons uh, cosine 60. And now we know what, <coughs> what f of 1 is. It's simply 1,416. Uh, and so we basically plug this value into the top and we get 1,416 newtons divided by cosine 60 gives us 2,832 newtons. So this is our force or our tension in the rope number 2. Now notice, since we knew what m and g and sine 60 is, we simply could have found what f of 1 is, right? Because f of 1 is equal to m times g divided by sine 60. So we didn't even have to find this. We could have simply plugged in our mass, our g, and our sine 60 and solved for f1. And then we could have solved for f2 in this manner. But there are really many different ways in which we can solve this problem. The important part is to realize that if our object or system is in dynamic, or is in static equilibrium, that means A, it's not moving, so no velocity in any direction, and it has no acceleration. And that means all the forces in every direction, the net forces, sum up to zero. So we simply use these equations, uh, use the uh, laws of motion, and solve for our tensions.